Hi there. Welcome to Rome Business Radio. This is the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight. We are broadcasting from the Hardy Realty Studios, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. I am Roger Manus with Rome Business Radio. And I'm Thomas Kislet, Mr. Uh, Rome Floyd Chamber. Good morning, Roger. Hi, Thomas. How are you? Doing, doing good. How are you? This is one of those days we would say it is not Chamber of Commerce weather. Oh, come on. <laughs> it is. It is. We already had a, a very successful networking event this morning. We had business before hours. By the way, all members of the Chamber are invited to attend those. And was this morning at the uh, College and Career Academy from the Rome High School. So uh, stay on the art building. Um, let me know if you guys want to tour that. But, you know, we had a nice group there. And, um, you know, you just read the newsletters. And we have business before hours monthly and business uh, after hours, lunches. Just come on to those meetings and network. Yeah, great. That's the that's the the purpose of Rome Business Radio here as well, to create connections and let people share their stories. And I guess from your perspective, Thomas, regardless of the weather, every day is a Chamber of Commerce day, isn't it? Regardless right. of weather. Yeah. Um, right. Well, we hope to be back in our studio soon post-pandemic. Uh, but in the meantime, we're still in a Zoom room. We've got a great group, large crowd. Um, Thomas, if you would please uh, do the introductions and we will uh, we will say hello to everybody. Absolutely. A big crowd indeed today. And uh, we have five guests and I think three of them uh, represent nonprofits, which is kind of like fitting because today is National Nonprofit Day. So congratulations. Uh, happy Nonprofit Day there. So uh, let's go around the room. We have Teresa Latundo. She represents uh, Class Recycling of Rome. Then we have uh, Liz Hensley and Kelly Barnes from the Southern Creative Group. We have Twyla and Harvey Jackson from Camp Bodie. We have John Fortune with the Kusa Valley Fair. And we have Clan Schmidt uh, representing Keller Williams today. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Hi, good morning, all. Uh, we, we, we met Good morning. Bri- we met briefly b- before the show. Uh, I'm I'm Roger, uh, and we do have a large group here. Um, we're going to get to the Coosa Valley Fair later on because John, I, I back in my youth, I was a little mischievous at that event. Um, but that's what fairs bring out in ten year olds. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, let's let's start with uh, since it's nonprofit day, Thomas. You want to start with some of the nonprofits and maybe start with the Jacksons at at, at their camp. Hi guys, how are y'all? Hello. Hello. We're good. And yourself? I'm I'm just hunky dory. Uh, I love saying that because that's what we say down south. Uh, and, and, and am I pronouncing it right? Is it Camp Bodie? Yes, Camp Bodie. And and and, and, right. and tell us about your organization. What do you guys do, and what inspired you to do it? Okay. Well, Camp Bodie is a nonprofit organization in Rome, Georgia. We're a five hundred one c three, and what we do is we promote sustainability, um, economic. Uh, wellness, agricultural sustainability, and things like that. We promote people to be intentional livers, living intentionally, meaning that um, taking more uh, action in our lives, not leaving it for other people to, you know, worry about the logistics of how we live and how we survive. So we teach people to be more self-sufficient, take a part in what goes on in our daily lives, in our communities, in our states, and in our um, Congress, just, just, just to be a part of what's going on. So what we do here in Rome, Georgia, um, we started a feeding families program mm-hmm. during the time of the pandemic. And what we do is we um, have families that come out to our different distribution sites and we help families in need with the feeding family food boxes. Um, and also we're currently getting ready to purchase some land here in the Floyd County area yes. to do an intentional community, um, self-sustaining community. Um, we call it the uh, Silicon Valley of Sustainability. We want to make it in the heart of the Floyd County Rome mm-hmm. area. Um, there we, we have agricultural um, components, regi- residential components, and commercial components. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have anything? Uh, we're also going to have a research center involved. And um, we're actually right now working to put on a festival at the Coosa Valley Fairgrounds. Right. And it's going to be a fundraiser. So we're going to get into that a little bit more. And what inspired you guys to start this nonprofit? I, I you you started it, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Correct. Um, well, to be honest, we saw, you know, when you think about the community or the city that you want to live in and um what you would like to see, right. um, we're we're real we promote being what you want to see in the world. 
And um, we thought, thought the best way to do that is to start the nonprofit, start our giving component, start the awareness of intentional living and self-sustainability. Um, we just thought it would be very important, especially in a time like this. Um, you have situations now where you have basically it's like we're the children and you have the Congress. They're the, they're the parents and, you know, they're arguing and going back and forth. And we as the what we say, the children are suffering in some ways because everything becomes political and our needs are kind of left left to the side. So um, we just want people to take more action in, in what's going on in their lives, find ways to um, help each other out, um, connect with each other mm-hmm. and um, not just be in the state of me. Um, yeah. and, then, and then the community itself is going to be a self-sustaining community as far as the community takes care of itself. For example, if you're in the community, and you may have shopping centers. We're going to have shopping centers and, and different things like that in the community. When you when you spend your money in the community, you actually get a return at the end of the year. And that, that's a program that we're putting together now. Uh, we'll have more detail about that on, on the back end. But, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and even though we, we're speaking of creating our own community, it's actually um, – a community of workers for the city, right. the county, the area itself. It's not for just the community. What so we do, jobs. right? What mm-hmm. we do is we do research. We do things to help our area, the people in our area. So it's kind of like a community of workers, but we're we're servants at right. the same time. It's mm-hmm. not just um, for the benefit of just the people in the community. It's going to be a community of servants, service. <laughs> Well, service I've, members. I've got a lot more questions and we will, we'll circle back around, around, but I do want to go around the room here, but I will say when you, when you compare Congress to our parents and they're fighting, yeah, that's an unhappy marriage, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right now in, in Congress. Okay. Uh, National Nonprofit Day, as Thomas said. So Teresa, uh, at Glass Recycling of Rome, tell us a little bit about that and, um, how you got involved. Well, I learned that Rome wasn't recycling glass anymore a few years ago. And at the time, I was doing a lot of digging about the environment and uh, what's going on on the planet and about global warming. And so I found the connection between helping in a small scale here in the community to reduce our carbon footprint by bringing more awareness to recycling and to not using virgin materials and instead just circling back around with the process of recycling a perfectly recyclable thing, which is glass, um, to reduce our carbon footprint and to become more conscious of what we're doing on a day-to-day basis to contribute to global warming. And so I decided to take this on and and do this as a long term permanent thing for Rome. And everybody's really excited because now they can drink their wine and put it somewhere where they don't have to feel guilty about. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, why does it have to be? Why does it have to be wine, Teresa? <laughs> because that's the thing I see the most <laughs> in the in the container. I see wine and beer bottles the most. <laughs> Well, of, of, of course you do. Uh, welcome to Rome. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what has been the biggest, is the biggest challenge just raising awareness about the need or actually getting people involved to do it on the ground? What's What's been the biggest challenge? For me personally, because I, my background is just being a stay-at-home mom and I don't really have experience um, leading businesses or I don't have professional training in, in this kind of thing. The biggest challenge has been all the research that goes into actually leading a nonprofit and creating a board and the paperwork and all of that. And so actually I've decided to become, just for now, I think the best thing is to just be a sole proprietor so I'm not doing, I'm not pursuing the legal um, structure of a nonprofit or anything like that. And so I may have to get with Thomas and, and adjust my membership, Thomas, because, <laughs> because I'm not technically a nonprofit. However, the work I do is not for profit. So even though I don't have the legal, um, the official status of a nonprofit, I'm just doing this to help the community really and to bring uh, awareness and educate kids about it and all of that. Well, do you have? Do you work somewhere else full time, or is this full time? No, no. That's that's why I think yeah. for me it's better to simplify my life and just do this as a side uh, act of love thing. But I do work at the YMCA 
during the day. And during night, I recycle. So I'm a recycle um, psycho at night. And in the day, I work for, with kids. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we all get pulled in a lot of different directions. Well, good for you. Um, so, uh, Thomas, can you help her out there if she needs to? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, well, continuing just around the room, uh, Southern Creative Group, uh, Liz and Kelly, is it? Yes. Yeah, because um, you guys pointed each other on our Zoom room earlier, <laughs> and I've already gotten you confused who is who. But uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys do. I, I assume you are for profit, which is great as well. That's what business is all about. So tell us a little about Southern Creative Group. So we are, uh, and I'm Liz, um, we are, we handle all aspects of events. So that can fall in weddings, that can fall in nonprofit events, that can fall under festivals. Um, and so planning and logistics all the way down to promotion and branding. Um, so overall design of an event, everything from floor plan to how people are going to maybe move through your event, if it's an expo or a festival. Um, oh. To On the wedding side, we do more florals and rentals and the design of the wedding itself. And then staffing for events, um, promotion of that event, digital marketing, and then web and graphic design. So um, we can take all of those aspects in different ways. We have clients that are in different portions of that, and we have some clients that are in all of those. So um, both sides of the the piece of the puzzle. And then we we work pretty closely a lot with... um, already some nonprofits in the community, but we both have kind of a servant's heart to um, use the knowledge that we do have in our strong business backgrounds to be able to help some of those smaller businesses. And I'll let Kelly kind of speak to that. So my background is in marketing, digital marketing, web design, and graphic design. So mostly I help nonprofits and small businesses with building new websites, um, getting the word out through social media marketing, and promoting their specific events. So, well, f- first of all, I want to touch on the event thing. How, how were you guys impacted by the pandemic? When the world kind of shut down, did that hit y'all hard as well? So we are fortunate that... Um, we, we made it through, we kept our team, um, but it definitely was, it, we learned to pivot, I should say. So we went from events. That sounds to, like, uh, that sounds like a marketing term. <laughs> I started doing um, daily deliveries of flowers. Um, and then Kelly started doing some like snack box type um, pieces. And then really we did have some venues who had um, as far as weddings, had very much open outdoor space. And so we're super thankful for, for them to have continued and be able to create other options for their clients. So maybe they got married outside and then they had an outdoor reception or we put up a tent or an open air um, pavilion type thing. So we were able to still service, I guess, those clients well, and it's interesting that you guys are kind of a one-stop shop, uh, for not, not just website, but also the event itself and execution. So um sounds like a great place for somebody to go when they, when they need some help in that regard. Um, well, I'll circle back around. I want to check in at the Coosa Valley Fair. One of my, one of my big memories of childhood uh, for everybody who grew up in Rome, I guess is, uh, and, and been a Rome native knows all about the Coosa Valley Fair and how it serves Northwest Georgia. And John, um, obviously the event's coming up. Uh, tell us a little bit about this year's this year's event. Well, first of all, <clears throat> we are planning on having a Coosa Valley Fair. We all know what's going on in the world and, and locally, but we want to plan. And if we have to do some changing later on, we get easier to change than it is to start from scratch. So what my role is in this, I spent 40 years in the Army, so I have no real skill sets. I just <laughs> go out and organize stuff, and, and my wife said I'm a professional volunteer now. But I have the village building which I rent out space to the uh, local businesses, small and large, and uh, to promote your company. You can sell things in there other than food. I also can take some nonprofit groups, which uh, we'll talk, if they want to talk to me, we can set aside some pricing or no pricing for some nonprofit groups in the village building. We have a community building, which is for the community to set up informational displays at no cost. So there's two buildings. I'm representing the village building, but I want you to be aware that the community building is also available. Now, we, I've got about 10 people now have, have 
paid for contracts to the village building. I got about 15 out there holding on contracts, like a lot of people, waiting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. So I still have available space. And I just wandered in uh, about a week and a half ago and seen Thomas and kind of throw his pitch at him. He said, get on this podcast and we'd talk about it. So that's, that's kind of why I'm here. Now, uh, if you want to do any of this or take part in this, you can contact me. I mean, I, he's got a contract, my contact information, or you can contact me to the Coosa Valley Fair website. But I would love to hear from some people. And throwing another little pitch out there, I'm also the uh, – I do the lunch program for the Exchange Club every Friday. So if there's somebody who wants to come and talk about their program their, or something, I can set that up. I'm booked through October, but I do the Friday lunch programs that we talk to our membership about different things. We've had the Ball Corporation. We've got the Fire Department this Friday. So we do a, a gamut of things out there to uh, inter, introduce ourselves to the community or educate the community. So – that's kind of what I do in a short burst of all this, and I'd be happy to hear from y'all or have not answer any questions. Well, and of course, the uh, the Exchange Club has kind of been handling the fair forever, right? Well, the Exchange Club is kind of weird. Exchange Club is the Exchange Club, but to be in the fair association, you got to be in the Exchange Club, right? So we're kind of two separate lines, and they all kind of overlap. But the Coosa Valley Fair is a separate. A group with its own board and everything else too. And for those that don't know, I guess the, uh, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, the dates this year are October five through October nine for the fair. And that's, it's that's it's and, and for those listening out there that you know that may not be familiar with it, it's a it's just a it's a typical American fair. You got rides and livestock shows and things like that, yep. right? That's that's correct. Yeah, um, cotton candy, you name it. Yeah, all the junk food is good for you, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that's 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 the four basic food groups, right? Um, all right, let's check in with Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm I'm good. How are you? We, we, I'm fine. Here. We got a, we got a big crowd today. Um, tell us a little bit about your business. Well, I work with Keller Williams here in town, uh, in Rome, and uh, we have about 40, 40 agents now. We've just had a huge. Um, influx of new agents and um, we also have another class uh, starting here the in september september 7th running through um, november 22nd um, where individuals who are interested in in obtaining their uh, real estate license uh, are encouraged to come and participate in this class um, it it goes monday tuesday wednesday evenings from 6 30 to 9 30 and um it, it, at the end of it, you're, you're qualified to, to sit for the uh, real estate license. And um, so I encourage anyone who's interested in that uh, to, to seek out some more information um, here at the, at the office. Um, we've been very busy. You know, the, the market's been really crazy uh, for several months. And well, since COVID started, it's just been in, in a, a hyper mode. Um, seeing some, some retraction in the last uh, few weeks. Um, you know, the inventory is still very low um, of, of new homes and, and resale homes, but, uh, and they come on the market and they're quickly snatched up uh, oftentimes. So there's, there's, it's a good sign. Um, people are still moving in, people are still buying houses and they're moving up. And so it's, um, it's, it's a great, it's a great time to, to be looking for real estate. And I'm very excited about being in, in the real estate business right now. Yeah, it's been crazy in a good way, I guess. Yep. Yep. That's, What's well? It, it, I guess y- yes, and, and frustrating also for a lot of people. You know. <laughs> so what, what's your, what's your background? Well, I actually have a a background in in IT. Um, I, I was an IT director for about twenty years, and about three years ago, I decided to split my career, and I went part time consulting on with IT, and then I moved into real estate, and so I've been doing real estate as well pretty much full-time for the past uh, two, two years. And uh, so I, it, it, it really fits well with my, with what I'm looking for in, in life right now. And that's uh, not a corporate job and some flexibility. And, and I really love the spontaneity of real estate um, and, and the IT world. So, so it, things, things are pretty interesting right now. Well, that, that's one of the things I find interesting about this podcast as we have done many of them is uh, people's business backgrounds some people know what they want to do in their teen years and they end up doing it forever. 
Some people mm-hmm. bounce from career to career. Some people, some people find a passion project that becomes a service thing, a nonprofit. So I want, I want to come back to the Jacksons. What is, what is your background? Um, you know, now you, now Camp Bodie is your thing, but what, what is your background business wise? Well, personally, um, my parents were pastors, so we were always in the service and community um, aspect. We were doing food drives and things like that, Toys for Tots. Um, They've been around for like 16 years, so they still have their ministry back home in Florida. That's originally where we're from. Um, I'm a housewife. Um, I do have my real estate license and things like that. So that's pretty much my background. And it kind of ties together with the projects that we'll be doing with the um, housing and things like that, the eco-friendly homes and things like that. So, and my husband as well. Yeah, I'm actually um, been in the construction field for about 15 years now. Um, I've worked for a treatment center for kids. So I've done a lot of work with kids. And I think the biggest thing is we just always had a passion for community, for family, for friends. And so we actually came from Florida about two years ago. And when we moved up here, we already knew that we wanted to establish something somewhere. And my wife actually was the person who found this place in Rome. And when we came here, we fell in love with it. I didn't even know there was a Rome, Georgia. Yeah, I never heard of it. I never heard yeah, of it. Yeah. That's great. Wow. Yeah. So so there was no family connection. You just were you were searching for something and you found Rome, Georgia. We was yeah, led here. We were led here. Yeah, we, were led led here. here. we just knew we wanted to be in the mountain areas. Yeah. Um, so we end up um at first when we first, you know, were looking a couple of years ago, we um looked at uh Franklin, North Carolina area, yeah. and the Blue Ridge area, Illa J. Yeah. But it was just something about Rome. We just felt like it's something that we can learn from Rome and something we can give to Rome. So it was yeah. just a, a mutual love. Yeah. And, and since we've been here, I mean, doors have been opening up. People have been just, you know, welcoming us into their homes, into their businesses, um, you know, Chamber of Commerce. They've been, yeah, you commissioners. Been great yeah, yeah mayor. Yeah, everybody's yeah, so, been yeah. great. Uh, they really um love John, what, yeah, everybody. yeah, John mm-hmm. Fork, yeah. Everything that we've been doing, um, that we want to bring forth, everybody's been very supportive. It honestly, it's like we were definitely led here. Right, it, right. It, we we couldn't have dreamed for things to take place and happen and progress the way it had. And the fact that when we got here, we didn't know that the pandemic was coming, so we really oh, yeah, didn't know. Yeah that it was going to take off and things were going to happen this way. But during the time that we got to sit down and we were going back and forth to Florida because he still had work there. Mm-hmm. And um, we just wanted to find a way we can give and what we can do. And the eco-friendly building portion of um, the community, you know, greenhouses, finding right. something that's affordable mm-hmm. housing, but also eco-friendly mm-hmm. um, things like that. It's just like, we wanted to bring it, here and like I said, we, you know, we're city people. We were born and raised in Florida, but at the same time, you know, we have rural country hearts, and it's a lot that the people of Rome can definitely teach us. And just a testament to what John said, uh, yeah, those guys over there are very helpful. We've definitely. done a lot of food drives actually at the Coosa Valley Fairgrounds, and um, you know, anything we needed, they was there for us. We just want to say thank you definitely. once again for your, all your help and assistance. Keith, Charles, all of you guys, yes. are here. you've mm-hmm. been great. We also have the Eco Over Eco Festival September 4th, Labor Day weekend, and we'll be having that at the Coosa Valley Fairgrounds, and we're so thankful for that. Um, that event, we're doing fundraising things for our right. feeding families programs and um, to purchase the land that we're getting ready to um, purchase them. Mm-hmm. So that's where we are. Um, well, I love it when the connections already exist. We love creating connections here, but when they already exist, that's that's uh, great to know as well. Um, Teresa, how can people help support your organization at Glass Recycling? So I will be at the Between the Rivers Farmers Market in September. Well, I will post it on Facebook at the Glass Recycling of Rome page. I don't have a website at the moment yet, but uh, everything that I announce is on Facebook. And so I'll be doing community service there to make crafts with kids, to educate them on um, what kinds of glass go in the recycling bin. Um, I will be taking donations for anyone who's interested because I was there a couple of weekends ago and some parents were wanting to donate. And I was like, oh, I wasn't prepared to receive donations. (laughs) So people are uh, wanting to help out because um, I think they know that 
this is not funded by the city and and it does um, it will need to have uh, funds uh, in place forever so that people are excited to to contribute whether by putting their glass in the dumpster or by or monetarily you know so they can they just follow you on facebook and 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 as you continue to grow yes uh, and change yes yeah, gotcha <laughs> Um, okay, ladies at the Southern Creative Group, how can people connect with you guys? Uh, website, social media, what's the best way to, to, to do business with y'all? Southerncreativegroup.com would be the best way to reach us. And what's your, what's your, is your schedule coming back? Is it picking up speed here with events and stuff? Is, or do you feel like the world is returning to normal? Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> We did to the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we had a glimpse. <laughs> <laughs> Our schedule is pretty full through the end of the year. We see a little bit of slow in booking for 2022. Um, but we I feel like as kind of the next couple of weeks come by, that people that are having events in the fall will then lead to those booking for next year. Yeah, uh, I do a little TV sports stuff uh, in, in another sideline of work that I do. And the uh, Atlanta Falcons, uh, a few weeks ago, they sent out media credential request for the season, which I thought, oh, that's great. And then they reached back out to us a couple of weeks ago and said, no, we're going to do it game by game, which tells me they're leaving their options open to dial back if the NFL needs to dial back. And I, I just hate having to think about dialing back. <laughs> I guess we all do. We want the world to get back to normal. Um, but John, as you mentioned over at the Coosa Valley Fair, you guys are proceeding full speed ahead. And if you have to change, you will. But right now it's full speed ahead, right? Full speed ahead right now. Um, and again, what? how can people, you know, how can they get tickets? How can they find out more information? How can they connect with you? Well, on the, on the Coosa Valley Fair website, I'll tell you how to buy the armbands and all that. We'll still have the normal right now walk up and pay as you come in. So the Coosa Valley Fair website is probably the best place for information. You can get my contact information there. Or if you see my email, it's tanker seven two two zero zero one at yahoo.com. And it's tanker because I rode on tanks when I was early in the army. And uh, but we have a a lot of excitement within the fair group itself because so far nobody has really told us no about anything. And we're just driving on with it, and uh, hopefully it uh, works out. And uh, just like the recycling uh, p- person, that might be a good program to come in one Friday to our lunch and talk about recycling because, to be honest with you, you don't see a recycling effort too much in Rome, Georgia anymore. So, mm, Thank you. Yes, I will email you. Okay, great. <laughs> see, we love it, creating connections. Now you've got a lunch speaker, and, Teresa, you've got an audience to learn more about recycling. This is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, consider renting a booth because uh, we do. I mean, insurance agents, financial people rent booths. We have churches rent booths. John Deere. We got a variety of people that go into the village building, and we try to make it a fun building to be in. And uh, me and Howard Cocker run that. We have a lot of those things going on with the building to make it fun for the vendors. It's not just come there and just hang out and and pep and talk about your goods. It's also trying to meet people like you say. We meet people in the village building and make connections too. So. Yeah. Come on in and join us. We'll have a good time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And uh, Glenn, how can people get a hold of you? Well, probably the, the quickest way is uh, you can get a hold of Keller Williams here in, in Rome through the Facebook. Uh, and it's facebook.com forward slash Rome, uh, K-W-N-W. And, um, you, or you can call 706-235-1515. And um, my information is available with the with the folks at the front desk there. So feel free to call and ask for, for my information and I'll be glad to get back with anybody um, with any questions about real estate and encourage people to, um, you know, look at, uh, look at the opportunity of becoming a real estate agent. It's very exciting and uh, there's a lot of challenges and it's a, it's a good time. It's a good time for, for moving in that direction. And Thomas um, didn't get a chance to visit with you as much as we normally do in the middle here because of the large crowd. But uh, I know you've got probably some final thoughts or some connectivity you want to discuss regarding this group. Absolutely. Uh, I always find something. And first of all, this is an awesome group. You know, this is really a representation of Rome. And, you know, we love it. You know, people, there are people that they are moving in from a different state. I know Liz is new to Rome as well. Welcome to Rome. 
and um, opening up, you know, I mean, it's an existing business, but uh, you actually have a new building and, you know, be uh, you're going to be able to, you know, um, greet guests there and plan events and um, which, which is awesome, first of all. Uh, second of all, you know, we always find find a theme, you know, and it's kind of tough to find a theme with a group of five. Uh, so I was, you know, did a little digging uh, and I, I thought, you know, today it's all about the five senses. Because we all kind of like in all different uh, areas, you know, in the nonprofit world, you know, in the community development world, in the entertainment world, uh, in the event planning world, you know, we have to, you know, look visually and recognize things. We have to feel, taste, smell, especially those corn dogs, and hear, you know, uh, what the customer wants. So um, this is kind of like the theme, you know, the five senses. And lastly, you know, I, we try to find synergies, you know, and also the five, uh, you know, guests here on the, on, the, on the podcast today, it's kind of tough, but not really that much, you know, because uh, uh, John has the space to host events. Southern Creative, Kelly and Liz, you guys are planning the event for, you know, Ken Bodie. You, you guys got to have some fundraisers. So uh, you guys get in touch there. Also, Liz can create uh, awesome uh, logos and graphic design. She created, by the way, um, the Forum on Ice logo, if anybody remembers. So uh, that was a huge success. Um, Glenn, you're going to get also with Ken Bodhi uh, together. You know, you have to work in the community, develop community, and that, you know, we need real estate and we need buildings. And uh, uh, you're going to be involved as well. And then, of course, you know, um, Teresa um, is part of everything, you know, especially if you have a big uh, event or especially you know if you develop uh, communities we have to teach uh, the sustainability of a community and you know uh, kudos to you what you do uh, you know it's it's a totally non-profit it's just a, a little side thing and I don't know if you mentioned where the glass container is the glass con oh, container yeah. is um, actually uh, behind Maker Village in the River uh, District so um but maybe uh, Teresa can explain that uh, real quick. But, you know, awesome group today. Um, and I'm really excited uh, to have uh, them all here as members. And uh, one thing, uh, we signed up almost 200 new members last week and we have an orientation meeting. And all of you, even, uh, you know, your, your, your veterans, some of your veterans, Chamber of Veterans, you are invited to come. We have one orientation meeting on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So come on in, network, and find out what we can do for you. Um, well, a couple of things there, Thomas. First of all, a shout out back to your days at the forum. <laughs> so I noticed how you snuck that in about the logo. Uh, yeah, Teresa, I didn't mean to ask you about that. Where can people drop off their glass? Oh, thank you. So if you are coming from uh, Publix, you get on Fifth Avenue. And then you'll see, as soon as you pass the foundry, you'll see a little street called Bale Street. And there's a sign that says glass recycling this way. So you turn left and you'll just follow that curve and you'll see the big fluorescent uh, metal bin. <laughs> it's uh, almost fluorescent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love a small town where directions are so easy. Go from the Publix. Or, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, 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 there's just one Publix here. <laughs> the, the last question I wanted to ask, and I do know the answer to some of this because Thomas touched on it, and this is just another thing I find, find fascinating, and I'll explain this to our viewers, but just show of hands here in the Zoom room, who are Rome natives? Just two of us. <laughs> <laughs> As jo John and me. I, actually, I was I was born, we lived in Armerchi, but that's Metro Rome, the metropolitan Rome area. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for laughing at my joke referring to Rome as a metro area. Uh, I, I just find it fascinating, Thomas. You know, you touched on it. You know, Rome is Rome is growing. Rome is diverse. Uh, Rome has people who have been born and raised, but Rome has people coming in because they were led here, like the Jacksons, or because they have found a home here to build their business or their family or their nonprofit. So it's just a great, vibrant community that I want to make sure everybody out there listening to us and internet world on this podcast uh, understands and appreciates. So come visit us in Rome, Georgia, or move your family here and set up shop, open a business. We'd love to have you, right, Thomas? That's correct. <laughs> well, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. This has been great. It's been a good group. I, I hope we got everybody enough air time, had a mm -hmm. large crowd today. But uh, thanks for sharing your stories, and good luck to everybody in their future endeavors. This has been the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight on Rome Business Radio. 
For Thomas Kislett, I'm Roger Manus, and we broadcast from the Hardy Realty Studios, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. Thank you so much for listening.